This set of slides is about the international sector. We are going to do the following in this series of video clips. We'll explain absolute and comparative advantage. We'll explain direct and indirect quoting of exchange rate. We'll explain the market for foreign exchange. And we'll explain the balance of payments. This presentation will explain absolute and comparative advantage. So why do countries trade? The world's economies, economies have become increasingly integrated. We call this process globalization. The extent of a country's involvement in globalization is called openness, or the degree of integration into the international economy. The South African economy is described as an open economy, which means that it's very integrated into the international economy. It is dependent on other countries. A country is self-sufficient if it makes everything it consumes within the borders of that country. But Adam Smith said, it is better to specialize in a couple of goods and services and trade with other countries because countries have different resources. Factors of production are not equally distributed amongst countries. For example, South Africa has a lot of gold and platinum, in other words, natural resources, but not a lot of computer factories. Therefore, South Africa specializes in mining, gold and platinum. Exporting the surplus and then importing computers or capital from America and Japan. This means South Africa has absolute advantage in the production of gold and platinum, while America and Japan, America and Japan has absolute advantage in the production of computers. So what is absolute advantage? It means one country can provide more of a good or service than another due to factor allocation. But both countries can also be endowed with the same factors of production. This does not mean that they cannot trade. Specialization, where one country specializes in the production of one good and the other in the production of another, should result in more effective production. A country will specialize in the production of the goods and services for which it has comparative advantage. So a comparative advantage means that one country can provide a good or service more effectively than another due to specialization. So let's look at an example of absolute advantage. A man and a woman are stranded on an island. They need fish and coconuts to survive. So here we have the man, we've got the woman, and they can catch fish and climb trees for coconuts. So the woman is better at climbing trees and she can get 10 coconuts in an hour, while the man can get only 6. That means she has absolute advantage in getting coconuts. She can get more coconuts. The man is a better swimmer and catches 20 fish in an hour. The woman only catches 8. The man therefore has absolute advantage in catching fish. If they do not trade and each spend 30 minutes on catching fish and 30 minutes on coconuts, they will have half of everything they can do in an hour. So the man will have 10 fish and 3 coconuts, and the woman will have 4 fish and 3 coconuts. So let's write in the corner how much they will have if they do not trade and spend half an hour catching fish and half an hour climbing trees for coconuts. So we've put these figures there in the corners. If they each specialize and the man only fish and the woman only picks coconuts, they will have the following after an hour. The man will have caught 20 fish and the woman would have collected 10 coconuts. If they now trade, 
the woman will have five coconuts and the man the man will have the other five coconuts while the man will have ten fish and the woman will have ten fish do you see that if we compare it to what they would have had if they did everything this themselves they now have more due to specialization so let's look at comparative or relative advantage trade can also be beneficial when one when one country or individual has an absolute advantage in both goods all that is required for both to benefit is that opportunity cost should differ. According to the theory of comparative advantage, each country will tend to specialize in and export those goods for which it has a comparative advantage. If both countries or persons have the same opportunity cost for the same quantities of the same goods, there's an equal advantage and then there's no basis for trade. Let's look at our example again. So here we have the same man and woman. But now a year later the man became ill and he was not able to swim anymore and now he can only catch two fish in an hour. Nothing has changed for the woman. So now the woman has absolute advantage in both fishing and coconuts. Do you think they should still trade? Yes, let's look at the opportunity cost. In the time it takes the woman to catch one fish, she could have gotten 1.25 coconuts. 10 divided by 8 gives us 1.25 coconuts. So in, for every fish, she gives up 1.25 coconuts. In the time it takes the man to catch one fish, he could have gotten three coconuts. Six divided by two gives us three. Therefore the man has a higher opportunity cost in getting fish. He has to give up three coconuts. It will be better for the man to get the coconuts and for the woman to fish. So the man has comparative advantage in collecting coconuts. So in this presentation, we explained why countries trade, we explained absolute advantage, and we explained relative advantage.